So my work here is primarily to look at the environmental uh, context of the site and to try to understand basically how the site both formed as a, as a physical entity, but also the ways that the environment influenced human beings, and perhaps more importantly for our research question, how human beings might have altered the environment and the ways that that really could have changed the physical world and therefore their own history. And this tells us about the alternating periods of flooding, the energy involved. So um, when you get large class like this, what happens is, is that that's telling us that there was a much larger flood event, that it was carrying more energy. When you have smaller, finer class or particles, it's, it's lower energy. And what we'll be interested in determining is where humans fit in this kind of pattern and whether they create these patterns. So the idea might be if you have lots of people living at Tashbalak and they're doing all sorts of work there, clearing lots of land, you might have a higher erosion rate, which would mean you'd have higher energy as the rain that's falling it has less vegetation to catch it and to hold it. And so it, you, know, you may have higher flood events overall. What archaeology is, is this kind of multi-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. And I've always loved it for this because the puzzle's laid out for us. We're now trying to assemble the little bits and pieces. And, and we're doing so in, in multiple ways. One is literally vertically. That is how the site sort of stacks up together horizontally across space, but also intellectually. How does this intellectual piece fit with that one? In five minutes, we could dig this much deeper and suddenly the entire puzzle changes. It's totally cool because it's always rearranging and dissolving. We'll never know every answer, but boy, we can get some really cool questions that evolve and keep moving together. And putting that puzzle together is just a great intellectual challenge.